Hey everyone, welcome back to Simming History, where we look at the history of architecture through the lens of the Sims. Before we get started today, if you like the video, please take a moment to hit like and subscribe. It helps out the channel. Last week, we looked at Tudor architecture, and this week, we are looking at its sequel, the Tudor Revival. On a side note, this one is actually a fan request. Tudor Revival began during the Victorian era, when there was kind of an obsession with what we would consider the medieval era. This interest birthed revival of Tudor style architecture in Britain, which was then quickly imported to the United States, where it was popular from about 1890 to 1940. Though some have symmetrical double gables, the most common form for the Tudor revival is an asymmetrical with multiple gables and projections. Overhangs common in the original Tudor are also very common in the revival. All of these gables, projections, and overhangs result in some really interesting layered roof lines. Steep roof lines of Tudor Revival is another very iconic feature. The most common roofing material during this time is slate rather than thatch, obviously beneficial for its non-combustible qualities. So let's talk chimneys. During the Tudor era, they were signifiers of wealth, and as one viewer noted in the comments, there were frequently false chimneys that were just ornamental. In this case, not only did they play an important role in the style of Tudor Revival, but they are operational, connected to a fireplace that was usually in the living room. Revival chimneys were frequently just as detailed and ornamental as their medieval counterparts, and were also very large central features in the front elevation. Tudor Revival also continued the tradition of the use of natural materials in their exterior walls. Usually, they sported a mix of stone or brick, with the classic timber and stucco on the second floors. There are even a couple with wood siding. Although, I don't know, can we really count those as Tudor? Also during the Revival, builders began embracing wood framing with veneer. This was significantly cheaper to build than the heavy timber or solid masonry of the medieval version. It also required simpler foundations and were much faster to build. Windows and doors in the Revival are also not all that different from their predecessor. Windows are usually multi-paned, frequently diamond patterned, just like in the OG, but are now operable usually double hung or casement. And obviously, in this version, when you moved house, you did not take your windows with you. Doors and arches were wood and or wood cased, sometimes with that Tudor arch, though other Victorian styles were also common. Ornamental, though, was the name of the game. Revival interiors were sometimes Tudor style, but more frequently arts and crafts a style originating from Britain around this same time, but we'll talk about that another time. Additional popular interior styles were Victorian, Edwardian, and even Craftsman near the later part of the Revival's popularity. Common to all was paneling, especially in the living room and dining room, which were the two kind of formal and also public spaces of the home. There were also frequently wide oak floors, heavy iron door hardware and lighting. Kitchens were mo modern and up to date for its era. There were also still former dining rooms, but more casual living or sitting rooms with a fireplace. There may also be a sunroom or conservatory, but the biggest change though, Tudor Revivals had an interior bathroom. Strangely, the 1940s was not the end of the Tudor Revival. It saw a second revival or resurgence in the United States in the 70s and 80s. These homes were significantly less loyal to their namesake, and are usually just timber stucco veneer slapped on a cookie cutter floor plan. No steep roofs, no focal chimneys, no Tudor arches or fancy windows. These watered down versions of Tudor is, I think, my mom's least favorite architecture style. Enough, anyway, that she has actually verbalized how much she dislikes it. And I get it completely. The original revival is so much better. Thanks for joining me today for Tudor Revival Architecture. See you all next time for topics to be determined. 
If you have any suggestions, hit me up down below. Until then, you can find me on Instagram at Simming History and the Sims 4 Gallery at Simming History, where there will be playable versions of this and many other builds on this channel. Thank you to all the new subs. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe! When we hit a thousand, I'm doing a live build. So subscribe and share. I'll see you all next time. Until then, bye!